Hello, my name is Igor and I work as a teacher and a researcher on St. Ishvan University in food engineering department here in Budapest. Uh, 3D printing is my hobby, but I'm searching uh, possibilities of using 3D printed objects in food industry. Uh, using 3D printed objects in food industry doesn't mean it always has a direct contact with the food. For example, these pipe holders or double helical gears, which are very hard to create, manufacture with conventional uh, process from the metal. With free 3D printing, it's, it's not a problem. If it doesn't have to transmit too big torque, then it is fine. If the 3D printed object has direct contact with the food, it can be classified in different uh, risk factors. For example, a small risk factor should be something like this is his ice mold on Tingerverse dead star ice mold. But also there are very high risk uh, printings like this egg separator. And I noticed so far more almost 10,000 downloads and at least the user wrote some uh, description that which filaments may be food safe, but that's not enough, you will see soon. Okay, I already designed some objects here in, in, in uh, our department, like this Helica Tulbrands promoter for member filtration, or this Helica static mixer. But before I continue, I have to find the answer to the question, is 3D printing food safe and uh, if not, how can we make? So here I will show you, you will see at the end, one solution. There are a lot of other solutions, but uh, I found one solution which may be uh, good for this. Before even we start, a uh, proper design can help too. Avoid sharp corners, use smooth edges, try to 3D print without supports if possible. A uh, quick example is this my helical static mixer, if I print it in vertical position without any supports, the surface is much better than in horizontal position where I had to use some supports and when I removed them, there uh, it was very visible marks on the surface. So uh, all this is for easier cleaning of the object. Okay, next is uh, food safe filaments. I have experience from my uh, previous job, I spent six years in uh, injection molding industry. So uh, let's see, what are food safe filaments? If we see, watch the structure of the filament, we have a bulk material, but we have so-called master batch, which is coloring uh, material. Usually one or two percent is added to the bulk material and we have different additives. So bulk material, uh, uh, which may be food safe, are PLA, PETG, nylon, Mm, polypropylene, polyethylene, these are hard to print with. ABS definitely not. I remember that when we prepared the materials for the injection molding object, we had to get certificates for raw material, for master batch, and depend which additives are added, because there are some additives which will raise a high uh, resistant or glowing dark type filament or similar. So every piece, uh, uh, part of the uh, use, material used in the filament ha must have food safe certificate. So filament should come with a material safety data sheet that breaks down the chemical properties and will uh, safety whether if it is FDA or EMA approved for food safe. To summarize what is important that when you are buying, you want to need a food safe filament, you, you have to check every product, every color, not just one brand or one type. So every color, every product has have that certificate for food safe. Okay, so when we uh, unbox the filament, food safe filament, it is food safe. Will it uh, stay food safe, full grade, the final object? It now depends on of us and our equipment material. So let's follow the material of the filament through the extruder. So when we uh, place the spooler on, uh, uh, in 3D printer and we in, uh, insert the filament into extruder, first contact will be with the rollers or drive gears. Uh, here we, have, we may have some powder or <coughs> from the previous uh, filaments that has to be cleaned uh, if necessary. Uh, it can be cleaned with the brush, with the vacuum cleaner, and uh, oh, don't forget if you are using a lubricant, uh, theoretically it, does, it, it has to be used on, on gears, but uh, it, it doesn't have 
direct, direct contact with the filament, but it has to be food grade too. Okay, next from, from uh, rollers, the filament uh, goes into Teflon tube to the hot end. Here, basically, we shouldn't have previous material. Maybe some stringing may appear, appear if you pull out the previous material. Some a nozzle was hot, uh, some thin string may be there uh, inserted. Uh, it will be pulled out with the new filament, but uh, how long extrusion should be, uh, you can do some quick experience. Put some very uh, uh, some dark filament and replace it with a white filament and measure the extrusion where you completely change the color, add some 20-30% and that would be your length for, for replacing filament if you are using ABS or some other filament before uh, you want to start with your food safe printed object. Okay, next is the nozzle. Nozzle here, the material is matted and extruded uh, to the object. <clears throat> now, most common nozzles are brass nozzles because it has high temperature, uh, thermal conductivity, stability, e easy of machining. But the pro problem is that the brass has a fast wear of the brass and uh, it may contain lead for easy machining. Small percent, maybe one or two percent, but unfortunately the lead is there and we don't need any lead uh, in the contact with the final object. Just to be clear with the risks, I calculated that approximately one my brass, which I uh, use in these experiments, uh, was a little bit more than two grams. And after 10 kilometers of printing, it lost 1.5%, uh, maybe 0.03 grams of uh, material. And if I calculate a two deciliter mark, that means extremely small amount of the lead theoretically in that 3D printing. So the, the amount is very, very small, but very, very small is more than nothing. So officially, I cannot recommend that anybody that uh, to use a brass nozzle if you want to pr print a food safe object. Okay, a better solution are hardened steel nozzles, but usually they also contain some uh, lead inside. So again, they cannot be recommended. And the best solution is to use uh, stainless steel nozzles. If you are using a stainless steel nozzle, final object may have official food safe certificate by using these nozzles. Maybe some other solution would be uh, some special nozzle like this, also ruby nozzle, so where, where the most affected part of the nozzle is made from ruby. Uh, and But the rest of the nozzle is brass, so I'm not sure I don't have experience with these nozzles. Okay, so far, if we have a 3D printed object, we take it off from the printing bed, just splash it in under water, and so far, it may, we may say that it is food safe if you follow these instructions so far. But will it stay uh, food safe? Let's see. So, growth bacteria on 3D printing surface. Uh, it is important to, task, uh, to analyze the growth of the bacteria on the surface because the technique is layer on layer and between layers there are small gaps that's perfect place for bacteria to grow up. So we need somehow to smooth material uh, and also, as I mentioned earlier, to pay attention to the design for easier cleaning. But don't forget, you cannot clean it usually in the washing machine because they're not heat resistant. Uh, I printed, 3D printed some cups for testing from different materials, from PETG, from PLA, I use different layer highs. Uh, one I coated with epoxy resin. Uh, the epoxy resin I use here is XTC3D. I contact the company, it doesn't have official food certificate because they didn't want to go to this complicated and expensive process. I use this one because this this uh, material I had at home. And I also tried the Polysmooth, which is not officially food safe, but I thought, uh, thought it may be good. Uh, the Polysmooth may be smoothed with isopropyl alcohol. So I thought to uh, create some smooth surface and see how will it result. But I noticed that it became a little bit sticky. Uh, I was very disappointed in the results, which you will see very soon. So uh, in cooperation with the University in Novi Sad, in the Department of Biotechnology and Pharmaceutical uh, Engineering, 
text of my colleague Jona Grahovac. They prepared an experiment. So they simulated using uh, contacting with food. They used a milk, placed the milk in the cups, left there a uh, few minutes, hours. They, then they washed only in a tap, uh, under the tap, not, not in a machine. And uh, after a few days, again, repeat this process. So uh, after this simulation of using in the kitchen, basically, after 10 days, they checked the bacteria and the yeast grew up on the surface. And this is the result. So we can analyze this table by which is material better, the PTG or PLA. Layer high also had some effect to, to this, but I don't want to discuss it at all. So. Uh, none of these materials are recommended to use in the, with the food uh, contact 3D printed object because it's very dangerous. The only which I can recommend is, is the coated with epoxy resin. Of course, don't forget you need food grade epoxy resin. So, quick conclusions. Uh, my experience, uh, my experience uh, proved that the 3D printing object by default is not food safe. It may be very dangerous if, uh, if it has a longer usage uh, and contact with the food. But uh, using a full grade epoxy resin may be one of the solutions uh, to make those 3D printed objects food safe. And uh, unfortunately, don't forget that, that uh, heat uh, deflection temperature is very low for PLA 55, for PTG 68. There is a possibility of annealing, but uh, uh, which will improve the thermal uh, resistance, but it will deformate the object. So uh, it may be complicated sometimes. Epoxy coating with epoxy resin uh, will, may improve this heat resistance. Uh, but I don't have experiments by uh, amount of the degrees. Okay, a few other possible methods uh, which I will try in near future is a food safe varnish or using a polyurethane spray or using a 3D printed object with a negative and create a final product with silicone molding. That's what I'm working now temporarily. And also, I would like to try an antibacterial filaments. They use some metallic ions, which has some antibacterial effect. I wanted to try already uh, so far, but it's very expensive. I have planned to test this also in near future, but uh, so far, this is one solution I found. So using a two component epoxy resin uh, will result your 3D printing objects are food safe. If somebody has some new idea, please write me in the comments or, or if you have some antibacterial filaments, this, this cup can be downloaded from my website, mytechfarm.com. There is a link uh, or in the description of the video. You can send me to my address. It will be in the description if, if it will be changed in the meantime. Send me those cups and I will do these uh, antibacterial experiments with them because I'm searching for new, simpler methods to find a solution to create a food grade independent objects. Okay, I hope you find this video useful. Thank you for watching. And if you have new ideas, write me in the comment, please. And thank you for watching. Bye.